They could that overthrew the duly elected civilian president, Alhaji Shehu Shagari, is surprisingly shrouded in a lot of mystery. So many different and conflicting accounts of the coup and the resulting aftermath exist. Here is what we know as the full account of how General Muhammad Buhari overthrew Shehu Shagari on December 31st, 1983. Hello, 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 his plus. Welcome back to another video. Gabriel here. Without much ado, let's get started. On December 31st, 1983, the Nigerian military overthrew the country's first democratically elected administration, led by late President Shehu Usman Aliu Shagari, under the presidential system of government. On that Friday night, everything was not well with Nigeria's first civilian president, as high military echelons orchestrated a mutiny following a four-year break from October 1, 1979 to December 31, 1983. After attending some official functions at the State House Ribadu Road, the late flamboyant Nigerian President Shehu Shagari proceeded to Obalinde in the evening to perform Jumat prayers. After conducting the prayers, President Shehu Shagari walked straight to the Presidential Council Chambers, which was close to his office, to record the New Year's speech as Nigerians prepared to greet the new year on January 1, 1984. Shagari planned to deliver his message to the nation from Abuja, the federal capital territory, where he intended to rest before returning to Lagos to prepare for his remaining three and a half years in office. He however ran out of luck when he was deposed in less than 24 hours by Brigadier Sani Abacha's soft-spoken voice on Radio Nigeria. Before the coup, Former President Shehu Shagari had contacted all interested parties to assure him of their loyalty to his administration, as he had heard reports of a military takeover. General Ibrahim Bada Musi Babangida has made no apologies for his involvement in the coup. He admitted to us, We in the military waited for an opportunity. There was a media frenzy about how bad the election was, massively rigged, corruption, the economy gone completely bad, threat of secession by people who felt aggrieved. There was frustration within the society and it was not unusual to hear statements like, the worst military dictatorship is better than this democratic government. Nigerians always welcome military intervention because we have not yet developed mentally the values and virtues of democracy. There were civilian collaborators in the coup notably Chief MKO Abiola, who many considered as Babangida's good friend. Other media outlets, opposition politicians, and the general public joined in with lacerating criticisms of the Shagari's regime. According to the former Emir of Gwandu, Mustafa Jokolo, who participated actively in the coup, Lieutenant General T.Y. Danjuma, the former Chief of Army staff, was briefed on the conspiracy to depose Shagari, he lends his support by criticizing Shagari's regime in the media. By these criticisms, Babangida and his associates were provoking a military takeover, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Ibrahim Babangida said, We couldn't have done it without collaborators in the civil society, collaborators in the media, collaborators among people who have the means, because the means were not easily available, but we received some from people who were convinced it was the right thing to do. The elites who participated want recognition, maybe patronage, as time goes by. There is a bit of confusion as to how the plot exactly leaked. While the National Security Organization was said to have marked political soldiers, at least one other politician, then governor of Plateau State, Solomon La, was said to have won Shagari. According to the report, an army officer who was part of the plot notified his wife who happened to be Solomon La's sister-in-law. La learned of the conspiracy to overthrow the government through his wife and he informed Mr. President. According to President Shagari himself, after dinner on the night of December 31, 1983, he was contacted by Captain Augustine A. Ayogo of the Brigade of Guards. Ayogo informed Shagari that he had some urgent security information for him. This happened in the presence of Shagari's ADC, Major Ali Gaidam, and a member of the National Security Organization, Ali Shitu. 
Ayogo told Shagari that a couple of hours earlier, he was approached by Colonel Tunde Obeha and informed of a military operation scheduled for midnight at the State House, Abuja. Ayogo was ordered by Obeha to arrest President Shagari at midnight and detain him until senior officers from Kaduna arrived. Colonel Obeha's unusual instruction prompted Ayogo to respond that he would only obey orders from his own superior officer. Ayogo briefed his commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Eboma, shortly after. Eboma organized for troops to be placed on high alert and to take defensive positions on the State House access route, as well as to strengthen the guards on the premises. Colonel Belo Kaliel, the commander of the Brigade of Guards in Lagos, was also contacted, but unfortunately, his deputy was one of the conspirators. Hence, Kaliel was arrested and detained. Then, at hash hour or at zero hour, President Shagari was awoken by his security personnel in Abuja who told him that troops led by Brigadier Ibrahim Bako were on their way to the State House to arrest him. Shagari was evacuated from the State House in order to get him out of harm's way during an anticipated gun battle between his guards and Bako's troops. At about 2.30 a.m. on New Year's Day, 1984, Arms troops moved to strategic locations, set up roadblocks, and took over the radio and television stations in Lagos. Airports, border crossings, and ports were short, and communication lines were also cut off. Many of the soldiers that took part in the operation were former students of Ibrahim Bamangida when he was an instructor at the Nigerian Defense Academy. Then, at 7 a.m., Normal radio programming was interrupted by martial music interspersed with the following broadcast by a Hitato unknown army officer. I and my colleagues in the armed forces have in the discharge of our national role as promoters and protectors of our national interest decided to effect a change in the leadership of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and form a new military government. This task has just been completed. Accordingly, Ahaji Shehu Usman Shagari seizes forthwith to be President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. It was the monotonous voice of Brigadier Sani Abaja, the commander of the 9th Mechanized Brigade in Ikeja. The military ousted Shagari's government on December 31, 1983, according to them, in order to rescue our nation from imminent collapse. President Shehu Shagari was deposed just three months after being re-elected for his second and final term in an election marred by allegation of electoral fraud. The coup plotters, horrified by the widespread bloodshed that followed the brutal military coups of 1966, carefully avoided harming any prominent government figures. The only casualty of the coup was Brigadier Ibrahim Bako, who was killed in circumstances that is still unconfirmed while trying to arrest the president in Abuja. What then caused Bako's death? There have been several different accounts provided. In the aftermath of the coup, the rumor was that Brigadier Bako was destined to become the new commander-in-chief and part of the legend was that he was eliminated to prevent that from happening. So. Was it a coup within a coup? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. However, Bako's son, Professor Ibrahim Ado Bako, also claimed in a January 2014 interview with Leadership of Nigeria that Bako was killed by fellow coup conspirators who were not aligned with Bako's intention to conduct a bloodless coup. But historian Max Yolen has obtained different accounts of Bako's death. Babangida's account has it that Brigadier Ibrahim Bako died from what you may call accidental discharge or sporadic shooting caused by the ensuing confusion arising from an attempt to arrest the head of state. On the other hand, President Shehu Shagari, in an autobiography, Bacon to Sal, said he was told by Captain Ayogo, who was company commander of the Brigade of Guards, how Bako died. He said Ayogo told him about 11 kilometers away from the state house where ex-president Araji Shehu Shagari was staying, Brigadier Ibrahim Bako and his driver, Private Suleim, were shot and killed when they entered into the ambush mounted by Reese troops brought by the officers from Kaduna. Also, Vice Admiral Aduo, who was Shagari's chief of naval staff, 
said in an interview published on Saturday, January 13, 2007 edition of The Sun, as follows. They sent Brigadier Ibrahim Bako to arrest him, Shagari, at the then uncompleted presidential lodge, Akinola Aguda House. Bako got to the gate, stopped his Land Rover, and even disarmed himself, left his pistol. He said, This man is a friend to my father, and that he would go to him alone. He went to Shagari and told him there had been a change of government, and that he would guarantee his safety, no force, but with all due respect and courtesy. Shagari said to him, All right, please, let me say my prayers. And Bako said, Okay, sir, I will be waiting outside. As he was walking out of that place, maybe the ADC or the security you have to pass before entering President's living room took action. As Bako was coming out, there was a gunshot from the security room and it finished him. These three different accounts demonstrate that no one really knows or is willing to admit how Bako died. Bako was buried in Kaduna on the 3rd of January 1984. Major General Muhammad Buhari became the new head of state. Ibrahim Babangida later denied rumors that Bako would have become the head of state had he not been killed in the coup. He also revealed that he was approached to become the new head of state but declined as Buhari was our senior, so I did not want anybody to jump him. Do you think the circumstances surrounding Bako's death was a coup within a coup? Leave your thoughts in comments. Click the video displayed here for more on the circumstances surrounding the death of Alaji Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, Nigeria's Prime Minister in the 1966 coup. If you receive any value or were entertained by this video, please smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notification so you don't miss our future uploads. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.